Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for being here. So before I get started um, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, seniors and specifically newcomer seniors and technology. Um, but I wanted to just share this quote that I saw. Um, when I read it, I thought, wow, that sure is true. And it's um, one thing that we've definitely learned um, over the course of the past year and the current pandemic, that we all need to learn how to adapt. So um, yeah, I just wanted to share that. But And also that the pandemic has had a disproportional effect on many older adults. It has made many more isolated and really highlighted the digital divide. So technology should combat social exclusion, not reinforce it. Access to technology is not about computers and the internet. It's about social inclusion and equity. Not only can technology be very helpful and improve the lives of older adults in many ways, the pandemic has shown us that digital access at home is now equally critical to our capacity to age in place and to our quality of life. So some of the ways that um, technology can be helpful for older adults that we've discovered over specifically over the course past year are accessibility. So there's many programs um, like Siri and Alexa that can be very beneficial for older adults. There's memory aids and physical fitness apps and programs. So many of us have been participating in fitness classes online, um, crossword puzzles. There's a program called Clever Mind that can help with memory. Then there's adaptive aids. As I mentioned, Siri. There's also an app called Magnoscope. Um, iPad has many assistive devices. Um, there's aids for people with vision loss and all sorts of things that can be very helpful. And then of course, the big one, socializing and staying in touch with friends and family. So I'm sure that's something that most of us have been uh, doing over the course of the past year, um, such as FaceTime, WeChat, Skype, words with friends. And we all know how important this has been, but for older adults, it has been a lifeline. Then there's lifelong learning. So there's, I know last year I participated, or uh, last spring I participated in an online course through University of Calgary. There's many free courses these days. There's um, language classes, TED Talks, podcasts. There's so many um, things you can, I can't even name them all. And then there's medication management and health tracking programs. There's a program called Prescription Remind Me. Um, blood pressure trackers, heart rate monitoring, and finally, safety. So I noticed that even my Apple Watch has a program um, for falls. If, if it detects that you fell, it will do a check-in. There's GPS tracking devices that can be helpful. So those are the, some of the ways that technology can definitely improve the lives of older adults. But now I'm gonna go on to talk a little bit about the barriers. So last March when the pandemic hit, uh, our program quickly canceled all in-person classes and moved online. Some of our clients are very vulnerable and we did not wanna take any unnecessary risks. Our program serves over 250 senior newcomers, and it was very challenging, if not impossible, for many of them to move online. And some of the barriers were uh, limited technology literacy skills. So many of our clients have never used a iPad, a computer, anything like that. And going along with that is often the fear of technology. So many, Many people, older adults um, included, are scared of trying it. They're very hesitant. They don't think they'll be able to figure it out and it can be very intimidating. 
Then there is the low literacy levels that some of our clients have. Many of them had, have no formal schooling. And then language and accessibility barriers. So um, may, some older adults might have arthritis and it's difficult to use a keyboard, low vision, and this is a big one, affordable broadband service. So uh, yes, yeah, so definitely a big one that has really been highlighted over the past year. Um, and it was even more difficult for many people because some of the sites, um, specifically in Winnipeg, but across the country, that have free Wi-Fi, such as libraries and public spaces, were closed. So. Um, our students, our clients weren't able to go to those places anymore. Um, and now people are realizing that access to broadband is now essential. In a home, it's almost like hydro or water. And then the cost of the hardware. So of course, that's prohibitive for many of our clients to purchase a, a laptop or, a, or an, a tablet and lack of family support. So even those who um, maybe uh, you know, are given a laptop or a computer, a desktop computer, they, they're not sure how to set it up. They don't have family support to help with that. So it can be challenging. So we've done our best to support our clients with this during this time. And here are some of the lessons that we've learned over the past year. Uh, number one, establish partnerships. So here in Winnipeg um, or in Manitoba, our agency established a partnership very early on with Tech Manitoba and Computers for Schools. And we were able to supply refurbished computers to most of our clients. Um, Tech Manitoba also delivered some online computer literacy courses for our clients. And they were also able to connect us with agencies that fund um, broadband services and hardware. Bonnie's going to talk a little bit more about that later. Um, the next thing that we learned is consistent messaging. So when we moved online last March, we um, chose to go with Zoom. And we have stuck with that ever since. It's um, if we were to change in the middle and go to Teams or another platform, it would have been very confusing for our clients. We um, pay for a Zoom account and we set up all the classes ourselves. We have um, language classes, more than 15 conversation classes a week and orient group orientation classes. So our staff set them up and sends the links in a very consistent type of email that the clients are used to seeing and they know exactly what to do. Um, yeah, we found that um, one of, uh, actually when we partnered with Tech Manitoba, they set up the computer, online computer course. And when they did that, they were sending a new link for every week, every class, and that became very confusing. Many of our clients were phoning us saying they didn't know where, which link it was. And so that's something that we try to minimize is confusion. And we try to just keep everything very consistent. Uh, flexible. So our staff is are very flexible. They're contacting people, um, you know, some through WhatsApp, some of our clients, it's best to contact in the evening um, or weekends. And we try and be as flexible as possible. And we listen and we attend to their challenges. We have found over the past year that many of our clients are very interested in just socializing, having some coffee time um, and fun um, activities. So we've tried to provide that just to help reduce the social isolation that they're experiencing right now. And relationships. So that's something that we, you know, before the pandemic we do and we try and do with all our clients. We establish a level of trust um, and we, um, our, our staff who contacts them, they know her voice when she phones them right away, they know. Um, and we um, try and, um, 
talk to them about different frauds and scams out there. So they they trust us. And Bonnie's going to also talk a little bit about more about frauds later on. Uh, we try to recruit their family as support. So many of the family members helped with setting up the computers in the homes, the ones that we dropped off. Um, they helped them set up a Zoom account and are very helpful to many of our older adults. And we try and keep the communication going with them as well. So if, we, if they give us permission, we try and CC the family member on all the information and one-on-one -on -one sessions. So we did find that um, for many of our clients, one-on-one -on -one sessions worked best. The clients with very low language levels have a real difficulty participating in an online group class. And finally, um, onboarding and Zoom basics for new students. So when new students register, we, um, one of our staff meets with them and does a Zoom basics class with before they're put into the class that they choose. So with all that, there have still been many clients that have not been able to access technology. And for those folks, we started a language buddy program um, where a volunteer contacts them once a week in their first language to check in and check on their health and safety. Many of our clients though have adapted string extremely well and enjoy the online programs, but most say there is no replacing the relationship and support you get from being in person. I want to add here that although this has been a challenging time, there have been some positives that come, have come out of it. In the future, we will definitely continue to offer some online or blended classes. They're great for our clients with mobility challenges, um, great for clients, especially in Winnipeg in the cold winter months. And um, even people who live outside of the city, we've been able to register some of those people. We had two clients that last March before the pandemic hit, they traveled back to Iran. And of course they've since been stuck there and they've been participating in our classes from Iran. So when they, when they log into the class, I think it's about midnight there, but it's been great for them. And I'm going to finish off with something that I recently read that I found very interesting. It said, the pandemic has served as a propellant, accelerating the adoption of devices and related services, perhaps a decade faster than might have otherwise occurred. So I just really found that it's for older adults, it's kind of been a real push to get them online. So now I'm going to pass it over to Bonnie to talk about resources and frauds and scams. But thank you so much for listening to me today. And thank you, Maureen. So for um, my part of the presentation, uh, I'm gonna talk about resources uh, related to accessing hardware, uh, broadband internet, as well as uh, uh, training, and then finally scams and frauds. From my perspective, this is all about reducing those barriers, uh, uh, as Maureen said, to uh, reduce fear, um, reduce the cost, uh, and increase access to the digital tools that individuals need. And uh, each one of these slides have been set up for general because we are looking at intergenerational volunteering. So some are for families and more generic. And then uh, I've provided you with some uh, senior specific resources. So when it comes to the cost of hardware and access to hardware, it is particularly challenging for families and seniors, uh, but there are great resources. Uh, and I've tried to present uh, na a national scope or regional focused, uh, but gives you some ideas to connect to resources in your area. Uh, Computers for Schools Plus, and it should have a little plus beside that because it's more than just schools. Uh, to find the agency in your province or territory, uh, go through Computers for Schools Plus and find out uh, uh, access to, again, refurbished computers and laptops uh, for you to uh, give to your clients. 
Uh, the Electronic Recycling Association is a large scale um, program that actually does the laptop donor program that is distributed through uh, Computers for Schools Plus. Um, so free or low cost hardware uh, is available to eligible uh, low income families and seniors. Um, so uh, by all means, go and check that one out. The third one is uh, Reboot Canada. Um, I get the sense it's primarily Ontario, Toronto uh, focused, but again, uh, another resource that offers refurbished computers to low income uh, uh, Canadians. On the senior side, there's the Seniors Can Connect program through HelpAge Canada. Um, uh, where a senior in, in the community can receive a device for their individual use, as well as receiving one-on-one -on -one instruction uh, through Connected Canadians, which I'll talk about in the training section. TELUS Mobility for Good has offered a package for seniors, um, uh, seniors who are receiving the guaranteed income supplement benefit will access, be able to access a low cost wireless service as well as a refurbished uh, device, uh, phone or tablet. So for internet, uh, there is a wide range um, of uh, um, supports uh, to access internet. The first one is connecting families, which is uh, helps uh, low income Canadian families get internet service in their home for uh, uh, $10 per month. This is uh, similar to the um, uh, TELUS Seniors Program. This is an eligible, eligibly, uh, uh, an invitation only, like you have to be eligible for the Canada Child Benefit. So families, if you're receiving the full complement of the Canada Child Benefit would receive an invitation uh, to this program from the government with codes uh, and forms to apply for this program. Uh, so an important one for low income families. Uh, TELUS Connected, Connecting Canada has a program in Alberta and BC for internet for again $10 a month, a very good cost. Uh, Rogers um, uh, and I should mention TELUS Connecting Canada is for low income families, youth aging out of care and persons with disabilities. Rogers Connected for Success is in Ontario, New Brunswick and Newfoundland. And again, provides high speed, low cost internet uh, to uh, subsidized um, uh, tenants and members of uh, different housing uh, partners across those regions. And I would also recommend you check out different libraries uh, offering, um, well, they may offer free Wi-Fi in their facility. Many libraries now uh, do hotspot lending programs where you get a Wi-Fi key uh, and you can access it. And I've provided you a link with the Toronto Public Library, but check out to see if your local library offers that service. And as I mentioned, the hardware and the software with TELUS uh, Seniors Program. And let's get into the training, um, trying to build a level of comfort. Um, they're uh, are using the technology. There's a wide range of, of training programs. So the Computer for Schools Plus program, as well as the TELUS WISE workshop have moved online to offer basic computer um, uh, skills and support. Um, in group as well as on one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, and on the senior side, there are a growing number of agencies that are uh, gr uh, growing across the country. Connected Canadians, Tech Service, Blue Canada and Cyber Seniors all offer similar services, both one-on-one -on -one and group virtual workshops to help seniors, uh, older adults uh, build up their literacy skills. And the majority of these are done through intergenerational relationships. The volunteers are generally young people, students, both at high schools and universities. I know in Ottawa, there are a couple of university groups that are uh, uh, connecting uh, through more uh, grassroots ways, uh, but these are four agencies in particular uh, that have focused. 
Connected Canadians is out of Ottawa, TechSoup is Toronto, Blue Canada is Vancouver, and Cyber Seniors is out of Toronto. Um, and I would highly recommend everyone to hyperlink and put it in your bookmarks, Tech Boomers. It's a website that was developed, a free educational website that was developed um, by a Waterloo graduate, and it's all things related to tech focused on an older adult population of how to use apps and different websites uh, and uh, tools. Um, and I have it hyperlinked and I go and check that out on an occasion. And then finally, uh, many libraries offers uh, different supports and services and Ottawa Public Library offers training through their TechnoBuddy and now their virtual tech cafe workshops that are focused on seniors. And in fact, in Ottawa, there is a librarian responsible for seniors programming and older adult programming. So check out again, can't speak highly enough about our library service. And then finally, um, as we were developing this presentation, we knew that seniors often feel uncomfortable and not sure uh, that consistent messaging as Maureen had talked about. So you know you are being consistent so that they will trust the information you are sending, but how do you build trust around that? And I've presented here a few different uh, resources. The Get Cyber Safe is a Government of Canada website that is generic for all Canadians, um, but there are some ones more specific to older Canadians identified here and would recommend you slide that in and share this with your clients. And on that note, I'm gonna pass it off to Shireen and. Uh, Avna to talk about uh, the program uh, on the ground, which I'm excited to hear again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bonnie. So um, for the remainder of the webinar, we will speak about how we adapted, you know, intergenerational programming to virtual environments. I'm just going to share a few organizational considerations, and then Amna is going to really focus in on practical how-tos, lessons learned and impacts of this adapted intergenerational programming. So most of you are going to be familiar with the kinds of organizational changes uh, that, that need to be made in order to support virtual programming. Um, technology is the basis of virtual programming. There were many considerations, uh, how strong, fast, stable is internet connectivity, both at home and in the office. Um, and then in people's homes, obviously, uh, are you going to use VPN? Are you going to migrate to the cloud? Um, who even knew what migrating to the cloud meant before the pandemic? So um, you, you need to look at ensuring the team has the access that they need now. It's quite different than when you're working in person. And, you know, obviously we had to do uh, some learning around what apps would be the best uh, for both our participants and for the team. And you're probably very familiar with Windows 365 and Teams. Um, and of course, for participants, WhatsApp, Zoom, and so on. Um, work, working virtually required a new policy and procedure framework. So um, addressing an incredible range of areas. So from adapted sick leave policies to work from home policies, uh, flexible hours, use of technology, addressing privacy and boundaries, reimbursement policies, uh, of course, employee accommodation uh, during a pandemic ha has many nuances that you have to address. We had to develop a whole set of new COVID safety guidelines. So for any in-person activities that were allowed. So on-site programming, obviously the office environment, um, package drop-offs to families. So we might be virtually programming, but we also need to, um, and to, to seniors, we need to get materials to them sometimes. Um, we had to develop uh, things like a drive-through procedure, you know, so people could drive through and get packages put in their vehicles. So a lot of things needed to be developed and the staff team trained up. Uh, obviously the home workspace environment needs to be uh, thought through carefully, desk, chair, connectivity. Uh, it's still a work in progress several months into the pandemic. And finally, uh, I'm not is going to speak more to staff training, but um, 
the first steps in adapting to the, the pandemic were identifying those tech savvy superstars. Can they provide training to the other members of the team? You know, finding those really great YouTube uh, self tutorials and doing some formal training. And then this slide, I will just briefly talk about, um, you know, most workplaces are looking at how to address the pressures the team is facing during the pandemic. So obviously everyone is under an enormous amount of stress because of COVID. And in a diverse workplace, uh, people are worried about family abroad. Um, some family members are living in insecure situations. Uh, it occupies a lot of people's mental space. I'm sure everyone or many are familiar with the plight of parents uh, who have kids at home and are working and homeschooling and, and, and trying to be that, that great parent. There's obviously a high level of isolation among the staff team as well. Uh, one member, many members of the team talked about that feeling of working night and day. So you need flexibility. It works for family and work responsibilities, but then you also have that feeling that you're, you're always working, you're always on people had to adapt to new job responsibilities. Uh, everyone had to become technical troubleshooters and, and multitasking in, in a very technological environment and using adapted materials for the first time. So a lot of new changes. I, I wouldn't want to uh, neglect to mention uh, using a gender lens. So of course we know there's a heavy burden placed on, on women. Um, around household responsibilities, plus work, plus kids uh, in, in the context of the pandemic. And finally, you know, that lovely informality that helps build the team and a sense of cohesion. No, we, you know, we don't have water cooler discussions. We don't have informal hallway conversations. So we had to think creatively about ways to replicate those kinds of important team building um, um, activities. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Amna. Thank you, Shireen. Um, so we found ourselves um, really abruptly in the middle of March uh, with no possibility of doing um, in-person programming. So it left us with little choice but to explore other possibilities. Uh, we have very close connections to our seniors and our families. We didn't want to leave them in this situation without connecting with them. So right away with uh, Mosaic um, uh, um, leadership telling us we can try whatever <laughs> needs to be done, uh, we started contacting our seniors. Initially, um, you know, if seniors, it was by case, uh, by case, um, you know, if uh, seniors were only on landlines, we contacted them on landlines. If they had smartphones, we had several possibilities, um, including WhatsApp videos. So we created a system where smaller groups of seniors and families could come together uh, four at a time and you know do like a program with us. Um, then eventually we were able to get all our seniors or at least most of them on Zoom. It took a lot more time than doing all the other things we were doing in between. Um, and if you see this picture that we've uh, posted here in this slide, this is the first time we were able to actually get some of our seniors and some of our families together. So this was a, a really happy moment for us. Everyone was very excited to be able to do this. Um, as we um, go further, um, we supported our team with lots of support. Like if they needed to learn about Zoom, we made it possible so that every time we do a program, we spend some extra time with our facilitators teaching them some new things. Um, so it was about, you know, what, what can we do one step at a time to improve uh, things uh, and constantly have this mindset of being resilient. And if we move to the next slide, please. We did a lot of thinking about what are some of those elements that we want to retain from our in-person program. Uh, that was, as you know, going really well. We discussed that in the first webinar. And we wanted to add some things to the virtual programming that will help um, our families and our seniors especially deal with the situation that we all found ourselves in, which was the pandemic, everyone 
uh, stress levels were really high. We were dealing with multiple things at the same time. So we came up with a really nice structure of a program that would um, help us um, retain the elements of program that were working for us and also include those new elements as, as, as you can see in this slide. And I'll talk about some of these um, in the next slide. So the first thing we always do in a program, especially in a virtual setting, is a check-in. And this is a, a place where people feel really comfortable and connected to us. It's always with this idea that we uh, already mentioned in the first webinar that our connection with our participants, our seniors, our families come before the content of the program. So here in the check-in, we ask them many things. Sometimes, you know, uh, what do you like best about Canada? Or what do you like about your city? Uh, what do you, um, what do you like about the pandemic? You know, they're, they're actually positives to it too. Um, or they might, um, we might ask them something like, how, how do you greet in your language or your culture? And uh, just to give you an example, they'll say like, oh, in, um, I say namaste. Another participant will say, oh, I say salam. Um, a, a Swahili speaker may say, I say jambo. And um, a Mandarin or Chinese speaker might say, I say ni hao. So, you know, you can imagine all these families, this three generational model, they're exposed to this uh, linguistic and cultural diversity and all these children with us and families and seniors, you know, they, they get to be heard and they get to be appreciated uh, despite all the differences we bring uh, to this program. Um, we have to remember that there's a lot of trauma happening. So one of the things that we included, which is new to our program, um, and actually we can move to the next slide, is include things that would help all of us stay calm. So we included special types of breathing activities, and I know this is also part of uh, positive discipline in everyday parenting. Um, so what are some of those special breath breathing techniques that will help us really calm ourselves? And as you can see the uh, facilitator's picture that we have up here, um, this is called the five finger breathing. And it's very much related to what's happening in the pandemic. The idea is that you're so mindful when you're doing this exercise. So, you know, you trace with one finger, you trace the other hand um, up. And as you're going up, you breathe in, you pause and you breathe out. And when you do it a couple of times, tracing one hand and then retracing it a couple of times, you feel that the part participants are really ready to, um, ready for the rest of the program. And if you can just try it with me for a second, breathe in and then. So this is the idea behind it. And I will show you a little video clip of it in the next slide. The breathing activity. You all know it keeps us calm and relaxed. And Moreover, when we do the deep breathing, it gives our brain more oxygen and our brain works faster. We will start from here and we will go up in all the fingers. So while we will go up, we will breathe in and on the top of the finger, we will hold just for one or two seconds, hold and then we will breathe out. While coming down, we will breathe out or exhale. So breathing out should be longer than the breathing in. So we will go through all the fingers and then we will come back to breathe in, hold and breathe out. So that was just a short little clip and we're only recording uh, participants that give, have given us permission to record. So that's why you don't see everybody. Uh, I don't know if you noticed that children are coming and going. And that's one thing we find in our virtual programming is that children come and go. Uh, we give them such mixed messages around screen time that this is very much expected. And in the next um, part, we will talk about something that has become a really 
important feature of our uh, program. So for this uh, intergenerational program, one thing that we really worked on as a team and trained well for is what we call oral storytelling. And this allows us to uh, choose stories that are really um, relevant and you know, will give us something to talk about. And we need no other skills we are, or props. We don't need books. Uh, we don't need literacy as um, you know prerequisite to enjoy these stories, and we also use these stories as a basis of covering um, you know everyday uh, challenges that people are uh, facing. So, for instance, in this story, you'll notice with problem solving uh, by asking when two friends cannot meet in person, how are they able to connect? And you'll also notice, you can't see it in the video because it, it's only showing me, but you'll see that uh, people are actually using hand gestures to follow along in the story, but you can hear them in the background. So if we can just play this clip, please. In this story, it's about two friends live on the opposite sides of the town. So Mr. Wiggle and there's Mr. Waggle. One day, Mr. Wiggle decides to go see Mr. Waggle. Opens the door, he comes outside and he shuts the door. And then he goes up the hill, down the hill, up the hill, down the hill, until he reaches Mr. Waggle's home. He knocks, knock, knock, knock. Oh, there's no answer. Then he calls out, oh, Mr. Waggle. He's so sad. Mr. Waggle, he's missing his friend, Mr. Wiggle. Oh, no <laughs> answer still. And then he calls out his friend's name. He says, join me. Oh, Mr. Wiggle. Next day, both of them decide to go visit each other. They open the door, come outside, and they shut the door. And they go up the hill. Oh, Mr. Wiggle. Mr. Wagon, what are you doing here? Oh, I was going to visit. Until it was evening and sleep. Yeah, so now, you know, it's been many days. They want to see each other again, but something happens in their town. They found out their town is in lockdown. But what are some of the ways they can see each other? Phone them? No. Sub video. What else can they do? Messenger video. Thank you. So that was a uh, storytelling that we used in our program. And I don't know if you noticed, there was one facilitator who had her phone up and we're connecting through her phone with another senior who wasn't able to join us yet on Zoom. So we had some really innovative ways of connecting to our uh, families and our seniors until they were able to get the hang of Zoom. Uh, in the next video, I would like to show you something where you know our youngest facilitator is leading our program and you'll notice something that even our seniors uh, maybe not in this uh, webinar but our seniors led our activities sometimes the breathing activities other activities seniors were leading them too so this is the rhyme mother and mother and uncle john went to a market one by one Mother fell out, Woo. father fell off, and Uncle John went on and on. Yeah. That's beautiful. And you can see they had so much uh, fun with us. Um, many of them learned a lot of language just being around us. Uh, many of these families are newcomers, so they're learning English at the same time. And if we move to the next slide, Uh, this is another, this is a three generational um, action song. It's a folk song from Morocco. So we try to incorporate elements from everywhere so people feel like they belong. Um, the, and the song is called Aram Sam Sam. We are going to sing a uh, song Aram Sam Sam. We are going to do it three times. First, slow, then just a little bit faster. After that, faster. Now, let's start. One, two, three. Aram, sam, sam. Aram, sam, sam. Guli, guli, 
Pulling around, sun, sun, they're rubbing, they're rubbing. Pully, 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 pully around, sun, sun. Just let's be a little bit faster. Around, sun, sun, around, sun, sun. Pully, 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 pully around, sun, sun, they're rubbing, they're rubbing. Pully, 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 pully around, sun, sun. Faster. It's going to be very fast. Be ready. Around sun sun, around sun sun, we fully 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 around sun sun, around it, around it, fully 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 around sun sun. I hope you enjoyed this clip. This all three generations together, it brings a lot of smiles to our faces when we're doing this and watching them. Um, in the next slide, we will we would like to show you another program adaptation. We added uh, something. Uh, specifically for our seniors, we uh, we noticed that our families are busy for all the uh, reasons that Shireen has already mentioned. Uh, you know, there's mul multiple kids at home. Sometimes they were homeschooling, so they were done pretty much in that hour-long session. But our seniors wanted to stick around and share things with us, so we had added a um, half hour of conversation circles. And this was a beautiful time where our seniors really uh, talked about anything they wanted to. Uh, some of them would show us their gem collection um, or you know, another senior showed us like how they do uh, cupping. Um, another senior talked about you know, their plant collection. So you know, it, was, it was really having that conversation um, in, a, in a virtual space, but it felt very comfortable for everyone. And in the next uh, slide, we would like to show you some other program adaptations. We had some senior to senior sessions, two of them actually. And part of the sessions were about um, creating an art gallery with whatever was available. So we used very simple um, techniques to show them how to uh, do painting. So, you know, you can use the back of a pencil to dip it into uh, tea or coffee or whatever you have available. So in this painting uh, in particular, you can see coffee with uh, beetroot, you know, so beetroot stain. And, you know, seniors who like um, art, they love this part. Uh, you know, art, as we know, is very calming for us and they really enjoyed this. Um, in the next slide, we would like to show you some of the lessons we learned. And it also shows another uh, painting from our art gallery, which is tea stain. And it's actually using the back of the pencil to just dip in tea and then make this. Um, so one thing that we realized is that going virtual created new ways to connect and build community. So one thing that we did was a WhatsApp group. Uh, we created WhatsApp groups where our seniors and our families could uh, text each other or, you know, share information, share their plants if they wanted to show us pictures of their plants or whatever they were growing in their gardens. Um, so many ways, and this could happen outside the program time too. So it was that virtual community that was created. Um, we also realized that um, uh, a structure is really important. You know, uh, we, we have a hello song, we have a goodbye song. Those structure in the program uh, make our children aware, oh, this is time for action songs, so I need to be back. Otherwise, you know, they're doing something else. So um, it really helps with that. Um, you know, seniors find that when we have gaps in our programs, it's very hard for them. They feel lonelier. Um, and they mentioned to us, you know, like, um, I feel like you've come to my home. They, they say that even though we are in virtual space, but even if you look at our cameras right now, we're all in our home spaces. So we're, it's like we're connecting over having tea or coffee. And it's that intimacy that most people don't realize that something like a virtual program can enable us to have that feeling. Um, so some other lessons here was, it was really um, amazing at breaking that isolation that seniors were feeling. It was a chance for them to practice um, language. Some of them would say, you know, we learn more through the oral storytelling or the uh, rhymes than we do in our English grammar classes or whatever they're learning in English. Um, the three generational model is, is the most natural way human beings have existed for millennia. Uh, we've always been together in all these multiple generations living together. 
Um, and we all always are amazed at how we're able to connect with our seniors and our families in a way that makes them feel really welcome to our programs. And the next part, the next slide, please. Um, before I do this, I wanted to mention that we do have partnership with other organizations. So for instance, ANO support services for older adults. Um, they have a, a settlement worker who comes and joins us in the programs. We also have uh, ways of connecting our seniors to extra support through our settlement workers. And that's been a very helpful uh, point of reference for our seniors if they need uh, extra support in any other area. Uh, I would like to share you an excerpt of um, uh, email that one of our seniors sent us. And it ties really well to something that, um, you know, there's a TED talk on this. Um, the longest study on human beings, which is called the Harvard Study of Adult Development, it's been around for 80 years. So for 80 plus years, the same cohort of, um, you know, men were followed throughout their life. And now some of them are in their 90s. And they found that the biggest, uh, that the biggest predictor of long-term health and happiness is social connection, not fame, not wealth, but social connection. And as we read this email, um, this is exactly what our senior is telling us. All the facilitators are conducting this program professionally. I have no hesitation to say that the program has now turned into a grand family program, providing physical, mental exercises, as well as knowledge, education, and global cultural information for the participants. I thank Mosaic and other agencies for arranging such programs for the seniors, young and juniors, simultaneously in such a difficult COVID-19 situation. These programs help the participants to keep themselves busy in healthy activities and running away loneliness from their lives. Keeping this in view, I am attending both the programs on Fridays and Saturdays. Um, and then we have the last thing I wanted to show you is a quote from one of my favorite authors. His name is Johan Hari and uh, his book is Lost Connections. And he says that just like bees evolve to need hives, humans evolve to need tribes. And I want to thank Families Canada for allowing us to have this virtual tribe and community. Thank you. Once again, thank you to all of our presenters today. For more information on our intergenerational volunteering program and the rest of Families Canada's initiatives, please visit our website at www.familiescanada.ca. Um, when you're on there, please be sure to check out our resources section, which is filled with various resources for parents, practitioners, and other caregivers as well. Thank you, everyone, and uh, I hope you have a great day.